Hey guys, how are you? So I'm finally going to share my recipe of my personal blended perfect worm chow that all the worms love and will make them fat. This is my secret recipe that I actually sell on my website. I'm going to give it to you anyway. People still buy it because they don't want to make it themselves. So if you don't feel like blending all these things together <laughs> through one of these machines, just go on my website and order it and I'll send it to you. If not, you could just try it. So I also want to show you this updated cover that Joe made for me so the powder doesn't go nuts. But I haven't tested this out yet today, so we're going to do it together. So let me bring you in closer so you can see this thing. Okay, he took a tub and he cut this opening in it to fit this thing. And basically it covers the, uh, the bin, my tub. Sorry again, I'm still feeling allergies. Um, we're going to see if this is going to work. He put this, um, this cord thing around it, bungee tie, and we're going to try it. Now this is the first time I'm going to use it with you. We're going to see what's going to happen. And I mean in the winter, if we have like a winter storm or something come and I desperately need chow, at least maybe this, I could just do it really fast inside and it won't be that much of a mess for me to clean up. But um, I don't know. We're going to see if it works and we're going to try it. I'm sure it's not going to contain everything 100% perfect, but maybe it'll do, you know, the job. We're going to find out. So let me show you my ingredients. Okay. I got two parts regular oatmeal. I got one part alfalfa pellets. They also sell it in grass form, but this was cheaper for me. This is the stuff that the horses eat. I got half a part of um, chicken chicken feed, chicken crumbles. I got wild bird seed. I have cornmeal, and I have half a part of oyster shell. Now, this is for vitamins. This darker red is hibiscus powder, and this brighter red is beet powder. I heard, and I don't know if this is true, that if you feed them things like this, the worm's color will be more bright. I know it works with hermit crabs. They have a shell. But, you know, I don't know about the worms. But, you know, I figured it's a vitamin for them. It can't hurt. And then I have um, whole wheat flour there. So those are my ingredients. Sometimes I add dried leaves if I had them. I just crumble them up with my hands. I haven't made it all the time with leaves. It depends how many I have. And another thing optional that I do is add dry green herbs. The green is for iron and for vitamins for them. And, you know, the reason I invest in my worm's health is because, well, healthy worms means fat worms means better worms for you and less problems for me inside. So I think it's worth it. Um, I've tried every combination with other things that there is. I've, I think I've tried everything. Um, I've seen other worm farmers use different things. I've tried that. Some I like, some I hate. You know, it all depends on what your uh, tastes are. But for me, this is pretty um, simple for me to make. I also get these ingredients in large quantities, like 50 pound bags. But you don't... Um, you don't have to get that much at home you know you could just get a, a little bag of each thing um, and if you don't feel like making it just hit up my website it's called mermaid tail I named it that because sometimes when I add um, if I add dehydrated blueberries it makes a bluish green so I thought man that looks like something ocean so I named it mermaid tail <laughs> so that's basically the most fattening recipe for worms that I have come up with and you've seen some of my worms how huge they are and this is how I do it guys so we're gonna test this grinder now we're gonna get this done because I feel some rain on its way and I want to get this done before it starts let's get some oatmeal going
how nice this made it. It's not going to focus. So look how nice. Wow. All right. I'm going to get the rest of this done. And uh, let's see. What are we going to do next? Let's do the the grit because that made the biggest mess the last time. And I notice other form farmers that are using this, same thing for them. I mean, you can't help it. this thing I like it I mean powder still comes out of here but it's not that massive cloud and honestly if I had to do this inside in an emergency I, I could I really could because it'll contain the majority of it so yeah I like it so this machine and all my ingredients I'm gonna link down below um, in my Amazon thing so you guys if you want to buy it you can buy it through my link. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And Amazon gives me a commission. Plus, I found out that you don't only have to order my things through those links. If you press the grinder link and you feel like buying shampoo instead, well, that's what you do. And I still get a commission. The only thing is with Amazon, and I don't know if other people know this, is that when you're ready to buy your products, you got to go on, put them in your cart, and buy them immediately. They will not honor a commission if it sits in your cart. I don't know why. I don't know. Someone bought something and let me know and it wasn't there. So I contacted Amazon and that's what they told me. So anyway, that's the deal with that. So now I'm going to mix in the oatmeal and the chicken crumbles and the rest is powder. I just mix it in there by hand and then we're good to go for a bit. So basically that's it. I have all my ingredients in here. I ran the cornmeal through the machine too because I just wanted to see what it would do. Obviously it did nothing, but it does look like it might have ground it up just a teeny bit more, but I didn't really need that. I just wanted to see what it would do. <laughs> and you know this little shoe thing, Joe bought it and put it here and it, it actually guides everything. There is a little mess because as I said, this is not going to be perfect. But, you know, I have that new shop vac. I could use that for that. So, now I'm going to just mix this up. I mean, look how beautiful that is. One of these worms are getting chunk. And then, time to feed. Well, I hope you like this video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Give me that thumbs up. Share your video with your friends. Tell them my recipe if they want to make it themselves. And I'll see you all next time. Take care. All right, we're back inside. Here's the chow. I'm mixing it with my hands and I'm seeing little little bursts of, of the beetroot powder coming up. So I just basically just take my hand down there and just give it a good mix. Feels really soft. So I haven't showed you guys the aviary. Oh, look at the beetroot, how pretty. Not the aviary, oh my gosh, listen to me. I used to be a parrot breeder years ago. The wormery, because we are still working on it. And I want it to be a surprise. I, want, I just wanna show you when it's like closer to looking really nice because um, you guys are gonna love it. So we're mixing this and now Let's go feed some of my worms. So here we are at the Red Wigglers. The Red Wigglers. Now I have a lot of springtails in here, as you can see them. And they're here because this bin has a lot of moisture. Because this is the Red Wiggler nursery and I've been spoiling them with fruit and other <laughs> juicy things. But now it's time to just give them chow and to slow down the wet food so that these little things could um, disappear. I mean, they're not going to hurt them, but I just noticed that they're growing in population. <laughs> so I lifted up the avocado. I want to show you underneath. 
it's like an avocado worm party. Oh, you know I have to stick my hand in there. Oh my gosh, that feels amazing. <laughs> Look at them all. These are Asenia fatida. There are absolutely no blue worms in here. And it took me, I am not kidding you, years to source 100% pure red wigglers. Raised indoors in a 100% controlled atmosphere. And that's where I put mine. You see the little, little teeny white worm? That's a pot worm. It is not a baby worm. Baby worms are usually a little pink. That's a pot worm, and it's also because the moisture. Obviously, avocado's flesh is kind of juicy. So, see it there? See the white worm right there? Yeah, that's a pot worm. He's also part of the composting world. It's not going to hurt anything. But I don't, I don't want them to get crazy in here. Oh my gosh, I stick my hand down here, and there's like wow there's tons down there <laughs> the juice from the avocado must have fallen there and just forget it they're all gathering there it's like let's go avocado party so guys if you want to get a massive handful of worms like this put an avocado there and just leave it alone for a bit so now if i was starting a red wiggler bin or you, you can take this little handful and you could go put it in another bin that you already have ready. It's an easy way to just um, get started with another bin. Yeah, look, this is like the fleshy part. So I'm gonna give that right back to them. We're gonna put them right back. Sorry, guys. Now I'm messing with the red wigglers first because I have not messed with any other worms. So today, after I do this, I'll go wash my hands thoroughly and then I'll deal with the other worms. So as you can see, they do eat wood shavings. It's taken long to break down. Not that long though, but they do, um, they do eventually go through it. People think they don't, but they do. So I'm gonna give them some chow here because tomorrow I'm gonna come and, uh, or maybe in a few days I'll come and film again and I'll show you if they like it or not so this is the chow that we just made outside so let's just let's just sprinkle some here and let's see what happens so obviously I'm gonna wet this down a little bit with water and then we're gonna cover them back up all right so I wet this down a little bit and I covered it back up see nice and damp so I'm gonna cover it with burlap again and I'm going to show you in a few days what this is going to look like. So if you all are wondering, the new ones that are here, these are my nursery bins. I have several nursery bins and I will link these in um, my Amazon description below. And this is where basically I raise the cocoons and the babies. And once they become juveniles here and they have a clitellum, from here they go to the bins that are in the other room and they grow out to be big and fat and then they go for sale. If you all are wondering what this is, look how neat this is. It's to catch uh, fruit flies and other flying little things. So you put apple cider vinegar in there and a piece of banana or apple or something and they go in there and then they just don't come out. And this is a bottle that we had saved from, uh, I think it was a, a bottle of some kind of alcohol. <laughs> we finished drinking so Joe uh, Joe bought that and um, it's a great idea I mean I already see something in there and he's only had it here for like a day so anyway guys I'll bring you back when this is all um, when they are eating us so you can see what they look like hey guys how are you I want to uh, finally share with you my recipe 